Greetings, creative viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology on Supreme Master Television. Last week, we visited the nonprofit Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence in California, USA. The use of artificial intelligence spans across many industries, including medical, financial, and robotics development. These types of systems are employed in speech recognition and word processing software, games and gaming consoles, automobile controls, and in many other applications. The theory of the singularity envisions a future where machines are capable of self-learning and self-improvement entirely through artificial intelligence. The singularity is basically the closing of the, the loop from humans building technology and then using that technology to study the world, but humans having to use it, to humans building technology and that technology studies the world and builds more technology that's more capable, so that once you remove humans from that loop, the technologies should be able to become more advanced in a speed that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the speed at which humans perceive the world or think about the world. In today's second and final part of this two-part series, we continue our discussion with the Institute's media director, Michael Anisimov, and President Michael Vassar. Let's now learn about two other people who are also members of the Institute. Eliezer Yukowski is our founder and a research associate. And a lot of the research that the Singularity Institute does is based on some of his early ideas in artificial intelligence. Ben Gertzel is our director of research and he's also the CEO of uh, his own AI company, Novamente. And the AI company that Ben has is really interesting because he takes a core computational engine and tries to apply it to different tasks, which is very different than most AI companies that just create an AI specifically for one task. So his AI can handle diverse tasks like it's been put in the form of a uh, avatar, a pet-like avatar in virtual worlds like Second Life, where you can play fetch with it. So he's trying to kind of create like the new uh, world of virtual pets, and his ambition is to create a virtual parrot that learns to follow the language of human beings and acquires a larger vocabulary by being exposed to that language. Both Mr. Anisimov and Mr. Vassar believe that once the singularity does occur, artificial intelligence will have reached such a high level that machines will have some form of consciousness, and the nature of that consciousness will depend on us. But in the long run, for a truly intelligent machine that's at the human level or above, it seems plausible to me that some type of consciousness would emerge within it. Ultimately, our actions, the programming decisions we make, the engineering decisions we make, are what determine what a superintelligence will do, but not in an easy manner. It's very difficult to program something to do what you actually wanted, rather than programming it to do what you thought you wanted. And software fails to do what humans thought they wanted all the time. You know, when your Windows crashes, that's an error from the perspective of you. It's not an error from the perspective of Windows. Windows doesn't mind crashing. If you anthropomorphize Windows and imagine that, it, that it's doing what it wanted, it wants to crash. That's what the, its instruction set tells it to do. Because if we're creating artificial intelligence, it's way more important to get that right than even like an operating system we use day to day. It's the most important piece of software to get right in the history of creating software. The ethical concerns of artificial intelligence have to mainly do with not knowing the way programming would execute, especially when we're talking about an artificial intelligence that can modify its own programming. It can be very chaotic, unpredictable. And that's why it takes our finest minds in computer science and philosophy to even begin to grapple with some of these questions. The risks of the singularity all have to do with risks from intelligence in general, and it's possible that we'll create an artificial intelligence and we don't understand the way that it works. If so, we might not understand what goals it has or what it's pursuing, and those goals could conflict with our own. 
Knowledge and intelligence are the most important resources that humanity has. They're more important than our tools because all of our tools are made using that intelligence. So if we were able to magnify the power of our intelligence, it would be able to benefit every other possible area, including areas like creativity, thoughtfulness, even empathy and compassion could potentially be improved by understanding it better, understanding it on the level of code. It would really be like a kind of conclusion to humanity's journey through knowledge where we finally understand ourselves enough to create a machine that can think like us. How would the singularity transform society? Michael Nisimov provides his view. The closest analogy I can think of for the singularity and a social impact is that of the arrival of aliens on the planet Earth. Because if we're creating a new intelligent species, it would be like an alien species. I think that we'll create our own aliens, and that's what's really exciting to me. It'll be aliens of our own design, and then they'll start designing other aliens, and there'll be an explosion of life that has not been seen for hundreds of millions of years. So what we're really talking about, by creating a new intelligent species, it's almost like a cosmic event that goes beyond anything humanity has seen before. It would be the most significant thing in the history of humanity. After this brief message, Michael Anisimov will talk about some of the possible benefits the singularity could bring humanity. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Once you have self-improving AIs, it seems that the technological framework of today's world is more than sufficient for them to expand very rapidly. Um, cloud computing is a technology that is emerging and which will make self-improving AI even more powerful, even more able to expand rapidly. Welcome back to Golden Age Technology for our program on the singularity featuring the perspectives of Michael Anisimov and Michael Vassar from the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence. An interesting question is how much energy it would take to power a system with human-level intelligence or beyond. Mr. Vassar has some ideas about the amount of power needed. The human brain utilizes about 20 watts of energy. So we know that it's possible to make a system that is as smart as a human, that consumes about 20 watts. Current Americans typically use about 13 kilowatts of energy, all told. So for the energy consumed by a typical American, one could easily run 500 systems at least as smart as Da Vinci or Einstein or Newton. However, that's a very, very low end. We, we don't really know how efficient systems can be, Biological systems are rarely 90% efficient, or even 50% efficient, or even 10% efficient. I would be basically surprised if you couldn't make something that consumed the same amount of energy as one human brain, and which was able to advance science more rapidly than mankind. But I would be astounded if the energy consumption of a small company or a small factory was not enough to advanced scientific progress more rapidly than mankind, and I would be pretty astounded if it couldn't do so a hundred times more rapidly. Mr. Anisimov believes that the singularity would enable us to use super intelligence to solve some of the most challenging issues facing humanity. The idea of the singularity is to go above that limitation that's held us by expanding out into new areas that, of intelligence that we've never experienced before. And if those intelligences have values that we can empathize with, they could help us solve our problems probably more effectively than we can solve our own problems today. There's water, food, and life. And 
if we had the ability to create minds that could spend full time on searching for these things, making them better accessible to many, it seems that a lot of human needs that are currently unmet would be able to be met. It seems like a lot of the world doesn't have as much of a lack of resources as a lack of intelligence to make use of those resources. One of the major reasons I'm involved with the Singularity Institute is to help restore the environment through using artificial intelligence. So our environmental problems are so huge, I think that artificial intelligence could help shepherd and steward our environment in a way that humans might not even be capable of doing. For instance, sensors distributed all over a rainforest could be uh, uninvasive and could analyze the biodiversity of the rainforest in a way that no human being could do on their own. The singularity could help distribute things, make the world more decentralized by uh, spreading things out more. For instance, if I have a machine that can synthesize or produce some products that I need in my own home, maybe I could download a design from the internet and have a machine put together a product for me. So another interesting aspect of the singularity is promoting self-sufficiency in small groups and communities. With better technology, I can do more with less. Finally, Mr. Anisimov shares his thoughts on what values it would be most important for a super-intelligent machine to be endowed with to make it a useful tool for humanity. The most important values of humans I'd like to see in machines are that of compassion, and respect, tolerance. Pretty much the values that many human beings agree are the most important. One of the great benefits of a singularity would be the ability to create a truly impartial being. Everyone has a side that they like to take, and people take sides right away, and I think that's part of human nature. To truly mediate conflicts and to move past age-long conflicts, I think it would be helpful to have a truly impartial mediator, which is what artificial intelligence could provide. Thank Michael Vassar and Michael Anisimov for taking the time from their busy schedules to speak to us about the work of the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence and for sharing their vision of what the future could look like with the dawn of super intelligent machines. We wish them the very best in their continuing research in this field. For more details about the Singularity Institute for Artificial Intelligence, please visit www dot s-i-n-g-i-n-s-t dot org. Innovative viewers, thank you for your company today on Golden Age Technology. Up next on Supreme Master Television is Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living, following noteworthy news. May we forever treat all beings with kindness and consideration. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash G-A-T.